What's going on gamers? Today we're going to be installing custom server jars onto our Apex servers. There are many different versions of Minecraft that an Apex server can run. Each one of these uses custom jar files in order to launch the game properly. Our game panel has access to many of these jars. However, you may find that the version you're looking for isn't listed. Typical custom jars that you might want to install include Taco Spigot, Bungee Cord, Waterfall, Spigot, Paper Spigot, or other custom versions. We're going to guide you through the process on how to install a custom jar file into your server. And the first step of course when uploading your custom server jar is stopping your server. This is of course when changing any of your server's files the first step always. Once you've done that you can scroll down to the jar selection part of the page and click on the jar file selection. From here you can either scroll with your mouse wheel or type CUST and make sure that you select the custom server jar. Make sure to change the version and then as always it is recommended to create a new world. Doing this ensures that there aren't any compatibility issues especially when you're changing to an older version or if your previous world had mods. So we're going to go ahead and create a new world. Make sure to click OK and from there, head to the left side of the page where it says FTP file access. You're going to want to click that and then log in. From there, make sure to head to the jar folder of the page. And once you're at the jar folder, make sure to head to upload. For me, I have my forge jar right here. My only issue is that it cannot be uploaded as forge or else we're going to get an error saying that it can't find the custom server jar. So what we're going to want to do is go ahead, right click it, and then rename it to C-U-S-T-O-M and then hit enter to make sure that the name change is final. Go ahead and click and drag that to the part of the page that says drop files here to upload. And once the file is fully uploaded, you have the 100% and the one out of one at the bottom of the page. Make sure to click on the name of your server at the top to get to the main Multicraft page. And once you've done that, you can go ahead and hit restart or start to launch your server back up. But oh no, I've tried to start my server and as you can see, I'm getting so many errors, fatal errors. You need to run the installer. The libraries required to launch a server are missing. So what it really is is just a forge jar, but I just renamed it custom for this video's purpose. So the reason that it's not giving us the libraries is because I haven't run the installer yet. Of course, it's not going to work. So what you need to do is run the jar because I didn't upload the server version or the client version. I actually uploaded the launcher. So of course, it's not going to have the necessary files and then make a folder for the forge files. Make sure that the directory is headed to that specific folder and hit OK. Once that's done exporting, we're going to want to go ahead and jump into the folder and look for the forge jar. From here, we're going to go ahead and rename it to C-U-S-T-O-M and then hit enter to finalize it. Once you've renamed it, you're going to want to open up FileZilla. And once you've opened up FileZilla, make sure to log in to your server. And once you've logged in, go ahead and double click on the jar folder. As you can see, our custom jar is still there. We're going to want to go ahead and highlight that, right click it, and then delete it. This is because we're going to be uploading the one that we have in this folder. Go ahead and highlight this and highlight the libraries. Click and drag it into FileZilla and then click and drag it into the jar folder. And then once that's all uploaded, head into Multicraft and restart the server. Once the server has begun the process of starting up, you can head into the console and check in on that. Of course, it's going to give you a bunch of information, but what you're looking for is the online check up here and the prepared spawn area at 100%. As you can see, we got 96 and then we have done. And then we also have the online check, which means that you have successfully uploaded your own custom jar. And another error that may occur is, of course, the server won't be able to find the custom jar. You may have renamed this incorrectly or you may have moved it or uploaded it to the wrong directory. If we head into console, the error that shows up is unable to access jar file slash jar slash custom jar. So that means 
that our custom jar is not in the jar directory or we have it in there, but it is not named custom jar. So what we're going to do is stop the server and head to test. From clicking the name of our server test, head to FTP file access, log in, and see if you can spot the jar. At the very bottom of the page, you can see that the custom jar is right here, but this is definitely not where we want it to be. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and click that check mark right there, make sure to delete it because that's not where we need it. And once it's deleted, click back and then head into the jar folder. And same thing as anytime you upload a jar, click upload, open up the folder where you have your jar, and we have ours right here, but it's named custom256. That's not the correct name for custom jars anymore. So what we're going to do is right click it, hit rename, and then just click the right arrow key, and then delete the 256 and hit enter, just so that the jar is named custom. From there, go ahead, click and drag to the part of the page where it asks you to drop your files. Drop your files there. Once it's fully uploaded, you can head to test or the name of your server and then hit restart. Once the startup process has begun, you can head into console and watch your server start up correctly. And of course, as we can see, the spawn area has started preparing, which means in a few seconds here, we're going to get it fully started. And as you can see, the server has fully started up with the startup done notification on the console and the online check up here. And if we head to the main Multicraft page, we're also going to get the online check here. Well, folks, there you have it. Thanks for watching this tutorial and thank you for using an Apex server. If you have any questions or need any more links for further reading, we have it below the video and on the Apex support website. That's all I've got for you today. So as always, I hope you have lots of fun.